Our next guest tracks daily short selling data, and he says short sellers are currently targeting Chinese stocks listed here in the U.S. We are joined by Will Duff Gordon, he's senior research analyst at Data Explorers, uh, and Will. You and I have known each other for, for a long time. It's kind of a, an exciting day for, for your company because you've come out with something that will also help Bloomberg users track short uh, interest in a way that they've never been able to before. Yeah, we're really pleased that uh, our data is available on Bloomberg for all of your users and our mutual customers so they can no longer have to rely upon the you know twice a month updates for the maybe a 10 day delay. They can get our data for all equities uh, daily, um, much, much quicker data. And given the way that how quickly markets move at the moment, you know, it's as well to get information as quickly as you can possibly get You used it. to actually do a segment on short interest, didn't you? Every two weeks that would come out. This is a couple years ago. Did I? Yeah, back when we were on the morning. Better segment, memory Carol. than I have. So talk to me about what short interest uh, will is showing us at this point. Well, a couple of highlights, as Matt mentioned. It's interesting um, what's happening with the Chinese companies listed in America. So I looked at about 70 of them, uh, and there seems to be sort of almost across the board sort of negative sentiment in those companies. Mm. Companies that seem like they've got perfectly good businesses um, seem to have recent uptick in short selling. Is so, it a lot of real estate? I just think about, we talked with Jim Chanos uh, yeah. on Friday, and we talked specifically well, not, about the Chinese yeah, real estate Yeah, it's not market. just that. It, it, it's all sorts of companies, automotive, batteries, um, energy, a few property, just sort of all sorts of them. And maybe it's, it's on the back of what happened with Duo Yan Global Water and Duo Yan Printing, where they had some corporate governance issues and fired their accountant and changed their CEO. I wonder whether it's a sort of, it's a transparency issue uh, as opposed to a, uh, a particular hedge fund with a certain we, we actually have charts, I think, for those two companies. Now, you notice this uptick in short interest, and then you see that, for example, they share the same CEO, they fired their auditor, they hired right. a new so one. So what are we seeing here? So, so uh, you're looking at, um, uh, well, that's our, that's our DXL Go, which is our sort of landing page. But if you drill into the, the ticker and you go to SI, there's a tab for the Data Explorer's information. Uh, and basically, we're saying that it pays to look at what the short sellers are doing every day in case you are long something like these Duo Yan uh, Global Water, because the short sellers saw this one coming very much so. So th those were actually, though, a uh, breakdown of short interest by sector, yeah. if I can see, read this far. Uh, and the green line is... Is the value. So we're looking at uh, the top is the is highlighting that the financials is one of the stocks of the biggest value borrowed. I think that is the chart for it. And below, um, it's the short interest ratio, which is the number of days it would take to buy back the amount of short interest. All right. So the Chinese companies, though, the tickers are DYP and DGW, just in yeah. case anyone's uh, watching at home. It's interesting. I was talking to Carol uh, about this earlier, and we, you, you and I talked about it last time you were on the show. It's a bad sign, obviously, if there's a huge uptick in short interest, but it's also not a great sign if there are no short sellers in a stock, right? Exactly right. Uh, and we talked about that, and then the market had a very shaky time, didn't it? Because there's only one-way traffic. If there's bad news and there's no short selling, just people are, are selling. That means that there's no sort of handbrake on the falling of the price. There's no buyers to catch the bottom as they cover their shorts, basically. Exactly. So on that same argument, if you like some of these Chinese companies listed in the States, and after all, we did look at masses of them. I mean, there's one called Rhino International that seems to deal very effectively with the wastewater from the iron and steel production. Mm -hmm. Knowing there's a big short base in it could be, you know, could be, could be a very you know, good thing for somebody who wants to go along that stock. Which is something to think about because you don't often think about that that side of yeah. the argument, do you? Exactly. The other thing to talk about is the is the um, the, 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 the pharmaceutical companies trying to come up with solutions to fight obesity. Um, it's interesting, you know, because they've got coming up with locasserin. I think it was Arena Pharmaceuticals comes up front of the FDA, and it's, there's always going to be rumors: will it or will it not pass the FDA? Always interesting, we'd say, to look at what the short sellers are doing because they're going to do very exhaustive research. And we did see this: two of these companies, you know, looking to fight obesity didn't get their drugs through and so the short sellers saw that coming they don't always get it right but they did in that case all right hey it's very interesting to have you on you're going to be on a panel in a bloomberg panel tonight i look forward to coming uh, and seeing adam johnson moderate that panel as well should be entertaining hey well thank you so much Thanks.